Welcome, Itwiners. This is our second uh, seminar inside the um, Sense Environmental uh, World Environmental Day workshop. Uh, I will. I would like. I am very happy to be here. Uh, as I know, I am Agustin Bastida, moderator of this group in Itwining, the feature group called Sustainability Education Network Service Itwining. And the aim to organize this seminar are very important uh, for our planet. In, in fact, they, these seminars would like to promote actions that contribute to generate skills that possibilitate the competencies in development sustainable goals and facilitate information of 2030 agenda through different means like organizations, experts and teachers. As well, they pretend to facilitate meeting spaces and learning exchange. The objectives uh, of the Sense Group are promote, promoting the international exchanges of experiences which provide lines of action with which to improve serious worldwide social environment problem through education and involvement to allow the greatest number possible of teachers and communities to become locally involved in the commitment towards the planet and to take and to take on responsibilities and to contribute towards the strengthening of the education for sustainability development goals and as you know in our group, our sense group, you can find different content. Uh, in the first uh, chapter, you have a welcome to the sense group, and what are what are the reasons to to be formed and created, and how to join the our group. There is another section about awareness and campaigns, how to, what campaigns and congresses are, are going on uh, at this moment or important. There is another section about Learning Corner with sense content, a channel called a Deep Into and a, se a section inside this Learning Corner um, called Critical Thinking. For us, for the group, it's important the communication, and this is why there is a Sense magazine. There are as well some Sense embassies, uh, some uh, e-twinners from Italy, Portugal, Spain, Romania, has uh, uh, give information about the groups working in their own country. And you can find as well uh, quality labels projects in sense related to uh, environmental education or related to uh, education to, uh, towards sustainability. You can find as well materials from uh, early learning years to uh, secondary education, occupational education, special needs education, etc., etc. And to finish this presentation of the group, you can find a net -net rules, a help sections, how to contribute uh, with uh, ideas or uh, creating materials or uploading materials in our group. And now, I am very happy to, to introduce you all uh, to Lucia Vázquez. Uh, Lucia Vázquez um, is a freelance at this moment. Is it true, Lucia? Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, and she is an art historian, educator, and a cultural manager. She is a consultant for implementing the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the Agenda 2030 in cultural and educational environments 
for different institutions such as CIFAL UNITAR and the Red Cross, the Spanish Red Cross, for the sustainable development. She is as well a Teach SDH ambassador and she is as well member of the scientific committee of the International Conference on Sustainable Development in 2017 and 2018, organized by the Earth Institute of Columbia University and Sustainable Development Solutions Network. She, she was head of the education department in the Picasso Museum in Malaga from 2008 till 2016. And she was Fulbright Scholar in the University of the Art and the, and the Museum of Art in Philadelphia. As uh, you uh, have listened, she is a fantastic person to introduce uh, throughout in this uh, 2030 agenda. And now is your time, Lucia. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, uh, Agustin, and thank you all. I cannot see you. This is very, it's a kind of odd, but I, I, I'm going to get used to it because I normally have my whole audience in front of me, but now I only have my computer, but that, that's fine, it's okay. So I would like to thank you, Agustin, and all their uh, organization to um, call me and, and, and make this workshop for you that I hope it's, it's useful because that's the main objective. As Agustin mentioned, I have been working in the non-formal educational field for many, many years, and now I work very close um, with schools that want to implement the, the 2030 agenda in, and the sustainable development goals. So, um, but I'm also I'm an art historian. So as you as you're gonna see in my through my whole presentation, I'm I'm gonna use a lot of artworks to illustrate some of the concept that we are going to talk about. Because in these um, uh, 15 minutes that that we have. I pretend to um, to divide my talk in two parts. The first part is, is going to be uh, more theoretical um, to contextualize uh, the SDGs, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Where do they come from, the 2030 Agenda, and all the challenges that we are facing as, um, as, as humans in, in, in these times. And the second part, it's uh, more practical. I'm going to show you some uh, practical examples, some, some inspiring examples of uh, schools and institutions that are already implementing the, the SDGs. And I would like to start with a short video that um, comes from a documentary that maybe some of you has, um, already have a, already seen. Um, it's made by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, but, um, but, but uh, I know that this can sound weird, but he is now a very um, important and play a very important role in the United Nations um, as an ambassador and an um, in, environmental leader. So um, he produced this, uh, this documentary and I'm showing you this short video. I hope you can, you can see it well. We've known about this for decades, for over half a century. Try to have a conversation with anyone about climate change. People just do now. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. And the problem seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. The truth is, the more I've learned about this issue and everything that contributes to the problem, the more I realize how much I don't know. Oh my God! Look how violent that is. Paradise that has been degraded and destroyed. We're knowingly doing this. I just want to know how far we've gone and if there's anything we can do to stop it. The U.S. has been the biggest emitter of greenhouse gases in history. You're a fossil addicted country. We are doing more investment in solar today than the U.S. is. People in office still don't believe in climate change. Why do you think there is such opposition about the science? I think it's politics. People are so arrogant to think they can change climate. 
environmental issues have become the biggest reason for mass demonstrations. We want to hold them accountable. This is the most important issue of our time. The question is, can we change our course in time? We need 100 gigafactors to transition to sustainable energy. That would make the United States, the whole world, the whole world. all energy. That sounds tangible. All that I've seen on my journey shows us we have the means of stopping this devastation. Politicians do what the people want them to do. Once the American people are convinced, the politicians will fall in line very quickly. If we keep pushing, there's no reason why we can't solve this problem. The world is now watching. We ask you to protect it. Are we and all living things we cherish our history. Well, that was the, um, and I'm gonna go back to my presentation. Um, so uh, that was the short video, and this is, of course, uh, was very emotional. Uh, but but the issue that we are dealing with is actually very emotional uh, because. Um, in the in the history of humanity, um, people had has this uh, feeling of um, living times of shock and instability uh, from the most part of the periods in in, in history. You know, for example, uh, during the Black Plague, uh, medieval Europe thought that they were um, very close to the doomsday, or two centuries later when. Um, Spanish conqueror Hernán Cortés uh, invited uh, the Azteca Empire. Uh, Mexicans believe the the end of the world was there. So, what's the difference between all these uh, uh, feelings and and the, and the and the time that we are living now? Well, uh, climate change now we know is global. It's affect, it, it affected all countries, and of course, it's something that it's going to be very soon out of our control because um, um, climate is going to, we, we don't know how climate is going to respond. We don't know what are going to be the consequences of increasing the, temp the global temperature in two degrees if, if we do so. So, of course, it's something emotional and, and of course, it's something very close to apocalypse. But uh, we're going to talk about solutions also, not, not only about that. And um, um, uh, novel, uh, win, winning Nobel Prize Paul Crutzen um, came up with a war, Anthropocene, uh, that is the, a new geological era. It's an, a geological era um, where human activity has changed the, the face of the earth. Uh, it's after the Holocene era and the scientific community agreed that the Anthropocene began in 1952 when all the, um, after several nuclear tests, um, a, a, a radioactive isotopes were founded in all continents. Uh, despite of all this, however, there's still a lot of people that doesn't believe in, in global warming as, or in climate change as if you could uh, not believe in Darwin theory of, of evolution, uh, despite of, as I mentioned, all the amount of data that scientific community has been, um, has been um, having for the last 40 or, or 50 years. No? And um, well, the fact is that um, this, is, this is true and these graphics want to, to summarize this increase of global temperature uh, since uh, we have records. And as you can see, um, 19 centuries is still will going up and down, but since the, we entered the 21st century, the temperature has increased. And in fact, the last three years, 2016, 17 and 18, has been the hottest uh, since uh, we have we have records and 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 of course that's 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 a huge problem. Um, I I I told you I'm an art historian and I I, I use art, but art is a vehicle for emotions and 
uh, contemporary artists has been uh, has entered the debate, the global debate of, of of climate change, sustainability, and global warming in a very serious and profound way. And I usually, when I when I um, do workshops for for schools or training for teachers, I also train them to use these artworks uh, to start talking with students or with other colleagues about these issues because it, it can be a great um, starting point for having this um, sometimes very complex conversation. So I have um, chosen for you four uh, artworks made by four contemporary artists that um, kind of illustrate uh, the four um, main environmental challenges that we are facing and that this will be the diagnosis that we, we will have. And then I will talk about the solution afterwards. So the first one, um, it's um, the first environmental challenge, of course, is climate change and the consequences of climate change that mainly are the rising of, of sea level and also um, uh, due to the melting of the ice caskets. And here, uh, this artist uh, from Galicia, Spain, Isaac Cordal, untitled this work, Follow the Leaders. So you can see here all the global leaders um, just talking and not acting, there's no action. Um, but the, the, as the sea level is rising and rising and they're almost drawing. So the artist is call, calling, us, calling out about the issue that we really need to do something and then politicals really need to do something now. I mean, we need action. Um, the other, uh, other very, um, very important uh, environmental um, challenge is the loss of biodiversity. I don't know what you feel when you see this image, but um, when I ask to my audience, uh, what do you feel, uh, what emotions do you have seeing this image? Most of them feel um, sadness, um, they are horrified, it's kind of the end of the world, it's a future that we really don't want to see, but it's already happening because this, this, image, it, this image is real. And it talks about the, the loss of biodiversity. Uh, according to a studio made by the Wildlife Conservation Society, uh, only the 23% of the surface of the earth is, uh, could be considered wild, meaning ha that has no human infra infrastructure. Here, Nick Brandt, this is um, an American photographer, um, he used to uh, he used to take pictures of, um, of wild animals in the in the African savanna, and when he came back ten years later, he um, found that the the savanna where the animals used to live uh, was invited, but by the cities, by these mega cities that are being built everywhere, and. Um, and not only the cities, but also the suburbs and the and the garbage. So the whole the whole ecosystem um, has been degraded, and not only for animals, but also also for humans. As you can see, there's a lot of people whose work is um, just looking for something in the waste in the garbage. So, um, and this image can also illustrate the the. Um, the, the heart of the 2030 agenda. It's not only about a, a climate change, it's not only about environment, it's also about us, about humans, and leaving no one, no one behind, ending poverty. It's a, it's a very important pillar in the, in the 2030 agenda. Um, a third main challenge that we have in terms of um, uh, environment is uh, the pollution of air and water. And now um, in Spain we have this um, uh, challenge week, um, living without plastic for, for one week. I don't know if we, are, if we can do it because plastic is in, in every, everywhere surrounded us. Uh, but um, According to a report from the United Nations, recent report, uh, in 2050, we are going to have more plastic 
some fishes in our oceans. So that, that's horrible. We have to really stop producing this, this and consuming this plastic. And, and also the pollution of air that is now a, a main um, public health issue in several cities uh, in the world, mainly in China and India, who are the principal emitters of um, CO2 in the, in the planet. So here, um, Yao Lu, which is an, a Chinese artist, is calling out um, for this, this problem uh, in, in, his, um, in his country, in China. Uh, putting together a, an idealistic Chinese image, uh, but combined or mixing with the present of China, which is building activity and, and a lot of cars and a lot of plastic. So putting all these two images together, it, it looks like like really like the end of the world, of like some 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 kind of tsunami. And we have talked about climate change, we have talked about loss of biodiversity, pollution of air and water, but also food, the way we produce, consume food, and um, the way we really feed ourselves. We have to change that um, because uh, it, it, is a, it is degradating land, um, fresh water, and also it's uh, emitting a very little gas called methane, mainly from cows, um, that increase also the, the temperature of, of the planet. And all these, these, four, um, these four challenges that we are facing are included in the, in the 2030 agenda that it's called transforming our world because we really need a transformation, a radical transformation massive change of habits in consume, the way we consume, the way we uh, behave with other species, the way we protect our environment. So it, 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 is, about, it, it is about finding new ways of, of being, of, of living in, in, and, on, and finding new ways of relating with each other and with non-human beings. So that were um, that were the that was the diagnosis uh, of the, the the state of the of the of the question. Um, but we have new good news also. Um, it, we have solutions, and solution has been uh, shown to the world. And in in that context, 2015 was a great year for for because two events happened. The first one in June. Um, was called the, the Climate Summit or the Paris Agreement. And this was very important because of three reasons, three main reasons. The first one, all the global leaders that were there admitted that the climate change exists. So they admitted that, yes, it's real. The second uh, reason uh, was that um, they admitted that the climate change exists and that it was caused by human activity. Because climate change, as you of course know, ha has existed in the, in the earth, in the history of the earth. But this one is caused not by natural, not, not by nature, but by human activity. And the third reason is that they put a limit on the increasement of the global um, average global temperature. We cannot go beyond two degrees, two Celsius degrees by the end of the century, but we should stay well below two degrees. We're going to reach 1.5 in 11 years. And scientific um, admit that they don't know the consequences of reaching two degrees. So by under no circumstances, we should trespass 1.5 degrees Celsius. It, actually, 2018 and 2019 has been the, um, the, the, um, the two years with, where the emissions of CO2 has increased, has doubled. 50% more each year. So this year, 
there is going to be a, a United Nations summit to deal with this the decarbonization of economies, which is very complex and very expensive, of course, but it's going to be more expensive if we if we don't do anything um, to to uh, put solutions to this problem. So one was the climate uh, summit, and the other one was the sustainable development goals, uh, known also as SDGs. But the the SDGs came from from a long way before, almost 40 years before, uh, we were talking already about sustainable development. So there is a key date, a first key date, uh, 2012, when the it was the uh, 20th anniversary of the of the of the Earth Summit that took place in Rio, and during this summit, the global uh, leaders. Um, admitted that we need a global vision of future uh, that combines or, or integrates the economical growth with the environmental protection and with the social dimension. So they were already thinking about um, some, some kind of, of shared global vision in sustainable development. This idea came from uh, the first Earth Summit that took place also in Rio. Uh, in 1992, where the three main uh, environmental uh, problems were identified. And the first one was climate change. They were already talking about climate, ch climate change in 1992. The second one was loss of biodiversity, and the third one was desertification. And this was a very, this was an issue, uh, um, very complex issue to deal with in, in, in that period of, of time. But the idea of sustainable development can come from even earlier before, because in 1972, uh, in the Ex Stockholm um, conference in Sweden, uh, the Prime Minister of Norway, Mrs. Brundtland, uh, in, in her intervention, she pointed out that the economical growth was having a very high environmental price and that these costs were unsustainable. So that we need to design a more uh, sustainable economical model and a more sustainable economical world. And she came up with the definition of sustainable development in the report that he made our common future several years ago. And this definition is the core of the uh, 2030 agenda. So sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present, but without compromising the future generations. That means that um, sustainable developments, of course, want economic growth, but also wants social inclus inclusion, social equality, and environmental protection for future generations. So we need to find that equilibrium. And we already have the technology and the tools to do it. So we just need the, the will. So going back to 2000, uh, 2012, in that second Earth Summit, uh, when, they, um, when they looked back, uh, all the global leaders, they realized, well, Basically, nothing was done since Stockholm, since uh, Sweden, since 1972. But that we uh, that the, uh, the the world had a very positive experience, and that experience was the um, to the Millennium Development Goals, eight goals to achieve the end of poverty and hunger, and primary educations, and mainly based on developing countries. Uh, but part of a global agenda that covers from 2000 to 2015. This model was the inspiration of the SDGs because it was um, an agenda made by objective with a shared direction, with global language everyone would understand, with a very specific target and with um, indicators and evaluate, to measure and evaluations to be done, to be done at, and to prove um, the results. So with this model, in 2015, the 
for the first time the, in the history of the United Nations, 193 countries sign up the 2030 agenda. It was a very long process with a lot of people involved, more than 7,000 people from different parts of the world were working in, in designing the, this, um, this new agenda uh, because um, the difference with the, with the Millennium Development Goals it, is that this agenda uh, wanted to have all the actors, not only um, the governments or the leaders, but also the NGOs, civilian, civil society, uh, religions, everyone, so everyone could appropriate uh, the, the 2030 agenda. So the Sustainable Development Goals are 17, are uh, much, many more than, than the Millennium Development Goals. And they have this holistic vision of the sustainable development. So you, you cannot achieve one without, um, without leaving one behind. I mean, you cannot have climate, climate action uh, achieved without accomplish gender equality because all of them are, uh, are uh, in the heart of the, of the sustainable development goals and divided in the three dimension on, of the sustainable development, which are uh, social dimension, and that will be the SDGs that goes from one to five, um, um, economic dimension, the SDGs that goes from six to 12, and the um, um, environmental dimension, SDGs 13, 14, and 15, although all of them are interconnected. What about SDG 16 and 17? SDG 16 is, is really the base of the sustainable development. I mean, without a strong institution, good governance, peace and justice, you cannot build sustainable development. And SDG um, 17 calls for alliance uh, between different partners, different actors, private, public, um, uh, NGOs, um, school community, everyone to get the goals achieved. And also they explained uh, through the charges of the SDG 17, the ways of implementation and financing the, the, the goals. Um, the sustainable development then is understood as, um, as a circle as a puzzle, as a circular puzzle, where all the pieces are interconnected and, and related one with the other. So um, you have people and the, and the wish of end poverty and hunger in all forms. You have prosperity. Uh, it, it talks about the, the SDGs that has to be with economics, um, decent work, um, clean energy, uh, responsible consumption to ensure fulfilling lives in harmony with nature. You have peace, which is SDG 16. You have partnership, 17. And you have planet, the three ones that we have talked. So these five axes um, uh, are also in the, in the SDGs. And here you have an image of, of how um, interconnected they are once you start reading the targets of of the, um, of the SDGs, you can see that all of them are, are related and, and connected. So, uh, so this is the, this is at the same time, the complexity and the beauty of the 2030 agenda. So how um, can we measure, how do we know um, who is improving, who is doing well or bad in the, in the SDGs? Well, there's several index there's one that I, um, I would like to show you here. Um, I don't know if you can see it well, um, big enough, but if you um, click in, in any country, I'm, I'm going to click in my country, for example, my country, Spain, you have this traffic light system of qualification where you can see how your country is doing in SDGs. Um, some of the SDGs, for example, the 12 has no data yet, 
a lot of countries has no data in in these in these SDGs. We are um, they are trying to improve this, but as you can see, Spain, for example, is the um, it, it, it's in the in in the place twenty five of um, one hundred and fifty six. And uh, we have no SDG achieved <laughs> so far, uh, but it, the, 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 the arrows are that you are going to achieve that goal if you continue to uh, implement that policy. And for example, 10, you are not going to achieve it for in 2030 if you continue, if, if you don't change uh, the policy. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you're wondering which one is the number one. Well, number one, of course, Scandinavian country um, is Sweden, but even Sweden has not achieved all of the, of the goals yet. So in terms of that, we are all developing countries in terms of sustainability because we all need to, to to get the work done. Uh, Sweden has no data in, in SDGs uh, 12 as Spain and in SDGs uh, 13 they are they are they are not going to well okay so well this is a very um, it's a very visual and easy tool uh, so I, I, I recommend you strongly to to use it and to use it in, in your classrooms also because it's uh, or, or to do projects with uh, your students because it's it really it's very it's very useful and and it's um, it's fun it's fun to to navigate and to discover all these of these countries and how are they doing it and um, also um, there's in terms of commitment uh, to the agenda 2030 uh, the none of the United Nations global agenda are um, mandatory. Uh, but the countries uh, has uh, have the compromise of the commitment of showing their results at, at least twice in the 15 years. So, um, for example, uh, Mexico and Colombia has reported twice already. Spain has reported has reported one, and and they can learn from each other in these reports because the other big word to um, remember in the 2030 agenda is cooperation and not competition. If we, if we want to transform our world, we have to start talking about cooperation and collaboration and learning from each other instead of, of, of um, not doing that done and being competitive. And of course, the education has a has a its own um, SDG quality education SDG four, and the the importance of the of the education of the SDG four is that it's transversal to the rest of the goals because in in, in the targets inside the goals, a lot of them has targets that talks about education and why because we really need for example for. Um, SDGs 12 cons uh, consumption responsible consumption and produ and production we need to educate people we need I was I was saying before we need a massive change of habits a massive change of behavior and that the most powerful um, tool we have is education we have to educate people in new System, in a new system of values, in cooperation, in collaboration, in protection of the environment, in taking care, uh, in being conscious when they buy, um, in being respectful, and all these things that um, schools and teachers do so well. Uh, so if you see the, the targets of the, of the SDG4, you have it here. I don't know if you can see it. I can, okay. I can put it bigger. So most of the targets in, in the SDG, here you have the targets and you have the indicators, are um, of course to improve quality in education, to give access to all of, of the kids in the world, um, um, equal access to um, 
increase the, uh, the, the, um, the number of adults and youth who has relevant skills uh, to el el eliminate gender disparities. But there is a target, very interesting target, the 4.7 that says, I don't know if you can read it, I'm gonna put it bigger, that says, by 2030, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including, among others, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles. So I think this target is key for our jobs as docents, our teachers, to promote this education for sustainable development, to promote among our students, um, the, a sustainable lifestyle uh, in human rights, in gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace. And, and this target is already a roadmap for, for schools and, and education um, to design new programs and to think about new activities. So this is a... a this is this this is not an hypothetical. I, I was going to say this is a, a hypothetical question, but it's not. This is a question that um, I would like you to just to reflect for for yourself or or for with your colleagues. How could we as teachers contribute to build a more sustainable world? How what, what can we do? And. This will be the end of the theoretical part with this, this big question. We have seen, um, we have contextualized the SDGs and, and now that we know the 2030 agenda, now we can appropriate the agenda in terms of how can I contribute to this 2030 agenda as a person, as a consumer, as a professional, uh, what can I do? in my in my daily life well i i, I have uh, brought you some examples and that will be the end of the talk and i think um i'm, I'm in time so i'm, I'm very proud of myself <laughs> so some inspiring uh, examples well the first one and i'm sure some of you know these examples but i i, I try to because i know you are from every part of europe and 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 beyond I'm trying to um, make it global so you can have global references. And the first one is the Teach SDGs. And Teach SDGs is an organization that um, uh, calls for um, global educators to meet and to talk about what they are doing in implementing the, the SDGs in their classroom. They share resources, they share units, they share um, uh, experiences and and here you can see that uh, you can join them well, they have a, a very interesting blog they have resources that you can use also and they have these um, groups of work and, and they are divided in group of, of works that uh, each group um, works in a different section and some groups even talk to the United Nations talk with UNESCO um, about the about accomplishing the the SDG four, and if you want to join them, uh, each each um, year they have this uh, application for being ambassador, teach SDGs ambassador. I myself am I'm an ambassador, and it's very um, it's a great experience to be there because you know uh, teachers from all all parts of the world with with amazing amazing experiences so i invite you to to apply to be an ambassador of and and start teaching sdgs in your classrooms there's another and, and this is related to the to t teach sdgs another um initiative very interesting is called the world largest lesson and the world largest lesson it's a, a web page basically of educational resources for implementing sdgs in your classroom um, they are sponsored for, by unicef by unesco and, and they have a very powerful material they have videos 
they have um, interactive activities. Uh, in, I mean, any kind, any sort, they have comics, any sort of, of, of materials that you can imagine is here. And also you can partner them and, and you can contribute with more materials to the, to the web page. Um, another global uh, initiative is, is the global school programs, and here the, um, they, they have specific schools and teachers that are working with them uh, in integrating the SDGs in their in their programs. And <clears throat> the global school program belong to the Sustainable Development Solution Network. Which is a which is a global network that um, implements the SDGs in a, different parts of the world. Here in, in Spain, we have the Spanish um, uh, Sustainable Development uh, Network. Um, as and and as as Austin was mentioning, I, I work with uh, with them um, often. And this initiative, they also have for uh, it's specifically for for schools. And they also have resources. They have powerful partners, and and you can find also a lot of material and inspiring experiences here. So I I um, encourage you to to uh, navigate through this web page too. And finally, two um, Spanish examples that I I know well. Uh, one is called Aula ODS, and it's an um, initiative. It's a program. Uh, from an uh, from an uh, NGO called Sociolidarios, uh, they work in in Valencia, and basically they they they, they integrate the SDGs through uh, methodology where the students know and reflect on the on the SDGs by um, four steps. They analyze and identify challenges and needs of the environment in their own um, neighborhood. They propose ideas to solve them, so it's like working by projects, and with with help with the help of adults, teachers, or other social agents, they design actions and they um, implement this action. And at the end, they evaluate the impact. So it's a very well done, very well thought uh, program to uh, to work with uh, an SDG selected. And finally. The program that I have designed and implemented in several schools that, of course, has uh, art involved. Uh, it's called Art and Sustainability in the Classroom. And it, uh, it consists in a program based on uh, four, uh, four pillars, four activities. Uh, the based, debates based on artworks related with the SDG that uh, the teacher is working artistic workshops, collaboration with local artists, lo artists in the in the neighborhood, in the city, and finally, uh, multidisciplinary projects. So for instance, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. For instance, you want to you want to um, work with the SDG 11, sustainable cities and communities, then we will have a debate with um, contemporary artwork with uh, some of them shows the problem, others show the, sh the solution, others shows how the cities were made and were conceived in the, in the 20th century, uh, how some artists imagine the future of the cities. And then we um, do a workshop. In this case, this is a real example with, uh, with an artist who was a graffiti um, painter. And he teach the, the the students how to make a mural uh, painting, and they design and um, uh, paint their their sustainable city. And when the mural was done, they train themselves as as guides, and they show uh, as an activity of the school. They show this um, image uh, in a guided visit to the to the little ones of the of the school. And then the, we have the, the project uh, ruled by a professional outside the art world or the educational world, but a person who is already working that has a, a green job, that has a job in the environmental field, in the sustainability field. In this case, this image that you are seeing, this is um, 
architect specialized in bioconstruction that were um, they were they were doing a um, a project about uh, improving the city to to become more sustainable and they were talking about uh, possible materials and ecological materials and 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 things like that. Uh, so really, if you if you would like to um, start working with the SDGs, um, the three steps that everyone needs to to do it's. Um, First is training, is knowing the SDGs, where they come from, why it's so important, the, the theoretical part that we have to, that done. Then you have to appropriate them because if you or your institution really has to believe in them, uh, wanting to uh, implement in them because it's, uh, it's going to transform really our world. And then the integration can come by three, by asking ourselves or our institution these three questions which is which sdgs are more aligned with my institution you prefer to work with sdg 5 or 16 or do you prefer to work with 7 you can prioritize your your sdgs you don't need to work them all you can do it by phases then what specific actions could we do and a very important question what tools do we have in my institution what tools in terms of human resources material resources economical resources um collaborate possible collaborations with the neighborhoods with a like what 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 um network do, do we have to, to um, implement these, these SDGs? And I would like to end um, my, in my talk with this quote, which is a quote um, that belongs to the 2030 agenda. So the future of humanity and our planets lie in our hands. It lies also in the hands of today's younger generation who will pass the torch to future generations. We have mapped the road to sustainable development. It will be for us all to ensure that the journey of successful, it gains irreversible. Well, thank you very much. And um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lucia. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you. Oh, I can see a face now. Great. Thank you. And I was in the shade. Thank you very much. I'm reading, I'm reading now the chats. I couldn't read it throughout. Thank you very much. I, so, thank you. I was reading the chat uh, while you were talking because you were in your speech. So, uh, uh, for the I had some questions. Uh, okay. Many attendees uh, uh, have said that uh, it's excellent. It's, it's so congratulations. Thank you. Um, I know ten of the attendees uh, because they belong to the central. Last year, one of them was participating in our workshop, introducing the uh, SDG in her school. In Crete. Hello, Maria, how are you? I saw you, you are here. I'm very happy to see you. Um, for example, Great. another um, uh, very good colleague from Spain, from Cantabria, uh -huh. Arantxa Iturrio, with us uh -huh. to work last year as well and tomorrow with a very good project. You don't have to, 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 to meet it. She would like to know where did you find these fantastic pictures? <laughs> uh, after four years, <laughs> well, I, I'm, see, my, my background is art history, so I have a little bit of advantage here. But um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I research a lot. I research a lot, and now I have this data. But I, but I can share my presentation to you, of course. And um, if anyone is willing to work with an SDG specific, please write me or contact me and I can um, try to help
find images because it, it really worked very well with these images. I mean, it, and, and I, I have worked with several schools, for example, in um, uh, working in terms of gender equality. And it, it's fantastic, the debate that is created in terms of complexity and um, that, that would, art, art has this magic, uh, this magical thing, you know, that can, that can uh, really increase the complexity of the debate and, and can connect with um, uh, people's emotions. So I, I encourage everyone to use artworks because, um, because they are great. There are also some platforms um, that, that, you, that are very useful. Uh, for example, Artists and Climate Change, all, all together, that's a platform um, for, that it, and they, they upload uh, artists and, and links of um, contemporary art made in terms of climate change and sustainability and, and everything. So, but uh, I mean, I'm 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 very happy to to share all my my research because I did it for for because of that. Uh, uh, I, I excuse my my language because uh, it's very difficult to pronounce uh, names. Uh, that that was, uh, yesterday uh, there was a, a Turkish man. Uh, I pronounced her name very very badly, so I apologize. So uh, another attendee, Latife Sari, would like to know how to be a ambassador. Well, if you uh, how to be an an teach SDG ambassador, if, if you go to the web page. Teach SDGs. Uh, there is a section that name join, and when you click that, uh, you fulfill a form, and they contact you for the next. Um, they call it cohort of ambassador because each year they are they are uh, having this uh, this general application where you can apply to be an ambassador. So um, if you go to that part, join, and then you fulfill the, um, the form, uh, then they are going to contact you and ex explain you everything. And it works very, very well. I mean, and they are, they are amazing. The, yeah, they are really well organized. And uh, I am reading in the chat, uh, Natividad Moron, who is asking if you can tell us SDGs stand for. Can you tell us SDG stands? Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 sorry, I don't I don't understand the question. It stands for, for like for Do you mean the assistance of these SDGs? Why they are necessary? Maybe that that's. Should we wait until she? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, thank you, Barbara. My presentation. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm I'm, I'm very glad you like no, it. No, a lot, a lot, because you have uh, done a historical uh, itinerary from the very beginning to to this day. And contextualize with the uh, political situation as well. So, art must be critical as any human being action. So, congratulations. Yeah. And, and, and art and, cul and culture should play an essential role along with education. And I think cultural world and educational world should be together working in this because they, they I mean, I work in, in both of the fields. And I, and I and I feel there is a great potential of collaboration there. Ah, uh, yes, um, I think they they have already answered the question. SDG stands for. I'm sorry. Yeah, sustainable development goals. I'm sorry. I thought I I, I mentioned it before, but yeah, SDG sustainable development goals. Yeah. In, in the whole presentation from the very beginning. Okay. So probably not in the, uh, in the beginning. I'm talking yeah. about SDG and SDG. And... Right, right, that's true. I'm sorry, Natividad. It's, it's, it's sustainable development goals. Yeah. 
Thank you, thank you. And now, after, after Lucia Francesca's speech is, is coming with us, Berta, I'm going to open your microphone, Berta, just for you. Okay, should I close mine? Yes, please. Okay. With us, if you like it, you, you are not in a hurry. Well, I, actually, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a hurry because I have my girl with the babysitter, so I have to go. <laughs> Thank you very much to all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Um, Berta? Hello, Berta? Hello. Can you speak a bit louder? Hello. Well, hello, Agustin. Uh, hello, Berta. Well, I'm going to introduce Berta. Berta Civera and her team in the secondary education school has been working about sustainability democratically. So it's a very, very difficult for me to pronounce it. And uh, they, they all with Berta, of course, have been working a lot and very hard and with their students. Berta is teacher of sociology and, is, and industrial relations at Social Graduate School of Elda. As well, uh, she's, she's teacher of introduction to the humanities, human resources management and trainer uh, teacher in the open uh, courses by the Spanish Ministry of Education. Uh, Berta has prepared a presentation that Berta you can share your you can open your presentation in your laptop or computer and you can uh, a screen open share your screen sorry do you know how yes you know how to do it very well thank you it's coming um have you got a camera or do you prefer to be in the shade <laughs> I think it's, it's charging, don't worry. Um, here it is. Yes? So, are you going, Berta, to, to tell us or some of your colleagues? Yes, yes. Uh, we are the high school Pascual Carrion team and he's the headmaster. Oh, hello. Hello, boss. Hello. How are you? <laughs> hello. I am Emilio Hernandez, headmaster of Pascual Carrion. We are a, a team who work uh, for sustainability. Can you speak a bit louder or closer to the mi microphone, please? Okay, okay. Thank you. I will... Uh, more low. Okay. And reproduce the, uh, the presentation because it's... Okay, or you prefer to show it like this? We are, we are here with we are a team with uh, Rion. Rion is a, a, a student. Yeah. Rion. Uh, Laura. Laura is a Hello. student. Hello, Laura. and Carolina is the, the other teacher, garden teacher. Oh, fantastic. We are, uh, then we will uh, talk about these points, uh, nine, nine points. We will uh, speak, we will speak uh, uh, 
Rion, Laura, Carolina, Amai, and Berta about this project. Perfect. Good, good project. Okay. okay. Next, uh, the project is a, a project important for our students, and the project uh, was uh, based uh, inclusion, inclusion, open government, and uh, ABG, uh, ABJ in English, uh, I think is LLBG, learning based in games and learning service methodologies. Uh -huh. and, uh, now, and now uh, we will have here, uh, some, some videos uh, where you can see our students. Uh, uh, this is, is, is Inclusion, open government, and ABJ and APS methodologies. Okay. Uh, now, Rion uh, will speak about connect and past and future. So, with past and future, we have three topics here. We have synergies, contagion, and sense. Um, by doing this, we connect with previous experiences, uh, for instance, spring meetings, environmental program intercenters, uh, Sano Solidarity Art, which is also tied in with Turkey, uh, Earth, Car Earth Carter, Sense, Surf of Colors, which is also tied in with Turkey as well, and Open Government. We use these types of methods to connect with experiences that we've had before, and that's how we can advance our Uh, participate and collaborate. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I have been lucky enough to participate in this project that my teacher Berta has made. As my head master said, this project has uh, many parts and many activities related to environment and sustainability, more specifically about how we train students. We have carried out uh, numerous studies to our teachers and to our families and we work with uh, Carolina and students in a, on a garden built in the back of the high school and we have learned many activities and many values related to the site of the subject and to the environment. Uh, we have helped to the families who they are very important to this project. They answer a lot of like and have done and study. Uh, we can uh, participate with a uh, school of our country, like the Alberto Show, and we uh, are a fantastic uh, school. Uh, this uh, video, right? Yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Encanto. My family gave five trips to the high school and helped me to make a mini This is uh, Alberto School, South School, elementary school. Hello, my name is Javier Pérez, Alberto South Elementary School, and my work is with Pascual Carrillon High School in ideas for sustainability projects. Uh, implementing, implementing. Okay, in the project, the vocational education students do plants such as radish, green beans, or asparagus 
with the help of various courses. They shoot their knowledge to develop uh, some gardening techniques to determine uh, the experience from a different perspective can be Berta, hay un problema con la pantalla, con el macro de la pantalla. Solamente sale una, una parte muy pequeñita. Es que tienes, tienes el escritorio y aparece también una hoja de, de la presentación. Fíjate bien. Vamos a ver si eliminamos cosas. Ahora. No, no. No es ¿Eh? correcto. Ok. No. Ok. Eso. okay. Perfecto. Identify and give value. We've managed to give identi identifications to a few clients, as you can see on this picture here. We have numerous versions, well not versions, but plants around the school. Uh, this can also be known as biodiversity register in our inner and outer part. As it says. This is real in action. In action. Hello, my name is Jorge. My name is Jorge. My name is Jorge. And I'm Rio. Today, we're going to show you some pictures of some plants and flowers that we found in the school. We also kept in mind that we can identify them. So let's go take a look at them. Alright. <laughs> Beginning with West. Beginning with West. Hello, my name is Daphne. And we have created and developed a program for all of our horses in order to incentivize the horse to save the time being in possession of the horse. In every different month, at the evening, we have created a different poster to advertise this initiative as an advertisement. Uh, selective waste collection, perfect. In addition, Ryan and other classmates <clears throat> uh, collect aluminium balls and team to collaborate with the uh, town hall and the Department of Biology. And in fact, uh, some, some students uh, make a video explaining what is uh, this project. In fact, some students together uh, with our Spanish teacher, we made a typical Christmas tree with remote books and we stand up at the home of the high school. 
and alongside with what Lara has uh, told you, we've also used other methods such as recycling. What we do here is, well, we take old trash, one stuff that's reusable. For instance, we take cans, cardboard, uh, paper, even newspapers sometimes. Um, and as you can see here, we have like four pictures of things that we've taken from the trash, from the recycling bin, and then we've remade it into completely something different that still has its own use. So, life lesson for you, don't recycle your trash and put it in to the trash, because it could be used to make all of that. From the Um, this right here is the eco audit. Um, we think about advantages, uh, consequences of starting up, like different ways to counter problems, like to make a sustainable and better living for ourselves in the town hall and other places. For instance, we have an aspect of center management structural aspects and personal habits. We also identify the needs of, of ways that we can get over this type of problems. Um, we manage to identify them through a level of personal motivation. How do we want to participate? We ask ourselves sometimes. Willingness of being part of the eco audit and committee. Uh, we've also inspired ourselves as well as other students um, to the sensitive motivation type. Providing documents to the headmaster is also another way that we've inspired people. And finding receptivity of the school board. Is, uh, uh, we know that we aren't trained by students yet, but we are growing and we have a I say uh, after uh, our teachers uh, have also one participation in project and we have been in fact we have a uh, evaluation uh, the ability to uh, 
planning for a like in at the project a Antica fantasy expedition and we have a a a trainer but we have to do it in our own way. Training, training. Um, you've even initialized a course that we've thought of. Uh, we call it Nook, which is eco saving, which is also related to what we've talked about earlier with recycling and maintaining a sustainable life for our center all. As you can see, we've made. A little bit of progress here, so at the minute it's going quite well. And this is the consignment that we have of the ecosystem that we can hope to achieve one day in the near future. So that's more or less it. That's it. And finally, communicate and disseminate. Uh, disseminate is a important for us who was a sustainability school with the teachers and the center uh, it's very important disseminate uh, uh, this uh, uh, formation formation and i think uh, it's important for our students and finally laura want to uh, speak uh, with a conclusion Without a doubt, my experience is very positive, and I think that just uh, as we have had the a great fortune of carrying on this project, and I think that everyone should be aware of this amazing experience. And from here, I told all the teachers of around the world that include this a uh, topic at this subject because it's very important to the to the future and thank you for all the people in especially the first class and Brian, all the people from the like teachers all the participants and from all the people that are so thank you thank you very much indeed uh, you have had uh, a very hard and excellent uh, uh, work. The, how how long had you been uh, doing this project? Had you been working during the whole year, during or more? Ah, this year. Uh huh. Yeah, excellent. It's a pity that the the sound uh, the the sound was not very good it's a very pity the the attendees were saying this problem this technical problem perhaps you were uh, far from the microphone in your laptop but well uh, it's a it's a minor problem um, don't know if there is any question from the attendees many of them are saying congratulations I think it's very necessary for you to keep on working next year and in this fantastic project similar to Echo School we had yesterday, which is developed uh, by the community government of Valencia, uh, sustainable schools, and which belong to a network. A, a, a bigger network in Spain. I know it very well because I belong to it from Madrid. And well, uh, many thanks to be here, Berta and Berta and the headmaster, the head teacher, and all the staff and the students and the community, of course, because I consider uh, parents are the community. Educational community is basic to develop because they help uh, from their homes to to uh, and fa to facilitate this kind of initiative from from this, in this case 
your secondary score. So uh, from from uh, in this case uh, my my duty as moderator in this network in Europe. Congratulations to SAX and eh, uh, Spain. I don't know if th thanks to you. And if there is, is there in any question for these colleagues? Natividad is writing. Thank you. Well, uh, well as I said, uh, they all recognize a good job and all the energy they spent, uh, not only uh, um, for this ac academic year, but to elaborate it, to this, this fantastic presentation. All the videos and pictures, this is a, an extra work that all the teachers uh, who are uh, working and developing this sort of uh, projects recognize it. So, uh, thank you very much and that's all for today. Tomorrow there will be our last uh, seminar and I hope everything is well uh, as well as today and yesterday. So, bye bye. Each Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.